The apparatus through which I am now speaking for the first time affords one very stimulating thought that it gives no opportunity for the opposition to interrupt or to tend towards pessimism. And therefore, I have, on a very dull morning, a field almost entirely to myself. The world today is full of great political and economic anxiety. Whether in Geneva, in London, or elsewhere, the representatives of nations are meeting together for the purpose of seeing what hope there is for mankind, what prospects there are for peace, and what considerations are present to their minds to solve the economic problems of the day. We here in this country, by reason of our less costly standard of living and more pastoral life, are perhaps less vulnerable to the disastrous economic and financial shocks which, afford, which affect other countries and in consequence can view with a considerable detachment this serious world situation. We have, by reason of our economic structure, some advantages which other nations may possibly envy and may subsequently come to emulate. And it is then with considerable hope for the future that we face the troubled times which are affecting other countries. Our new responsibilities on the Council of the League of Nations will afford greater opportunities for a detached examination of international affairs than is usually the case with the representatives of larger countries. And our newfound freedom gives us opportunities for developing in our own way, untrammeled and uninterrupted, our, the destiny which is the prime consideration of the founders of this state. Our new relations, international relations, are, fortunately for us, coming at a time when we have had many opportunities of meeting the representatives of the various Dominion governments who are with us in that great Commonwealth of Nations, known as the British Commonwealth of Nations. We have had the pleasure and the satisfaction of welcoming with admiration, affection and respect the Prime Ministers of the various self-governing dominions. We have formed new ties of friendship with them. We have, by reason of that association, found much ground for common action, great opportunities for cooperation, and much hope for the future, tending towards the uplifting of mankind, general peace, and general uh, rehabilitation of the world's economic forces. Our message then is one of peace and goodwill to all, with an earnest effort on our part to do what in us lies towards restoring the damages which have resulted from the Great War, towards repairing the fallen economic structures, and towards making the world a place for peace and goodwill.